Now these models are related to the third week of development. Third week of development is also known as stage of gastrulation. That is, all three germ layers are formed, meaning thereby the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. All three germ layers are formed, and this is known as gastrulation. So we'll take up the embryonic disc. Now, embryonic disc initially is a rounded structure. Uh, you can see this embryonic disc when you remove the amniotic cavity from the top. See, this is the embryonic disc. But you cannot see it without cutting the amniotic cavity from the top. So, if you cut it from here, you will see this structure as a rounded appearance. And it has got cranial end and the caudal end. Now, caudal end has got we had this epiblast and hypoblast. So, epiblast undergo some changes to form primitive streak at the caudal end and this primitive streak allows the migration of cells from the primitive streak to the cranial end of embryonic disc making the embryonic disc as pear shaped. So, this is pear shaped embryonic disc. You can see this is the cranial end and this one is the caudal end. And here the arrows show the migration of cells from the primitive streak towards the cranial end, giving it the pear shaped appearance. Right? After that, there is formation of intra embryonic mesoderm. Means this is epiblast and hyperblast. The epiblast cells have primitive streak at the caudal end. And from the primitive streak, the cells migrate and insinuate between the epiblast and hypoblast and form the intraembryonic mesoderm. You can see this intraembryonic mesoderm as a fish tailed appearance on either side of the notochord. So, this is uh, it is similar to um, parents like a sandwich and a child is lying in between the two parents. So this is how the intraembryonic mesoderm is formed. There is no gap between the two parents and then primitive streak cells they migrate and insinuate between the epiblast and hypoblast forming the intraembryonic mesoderm. And this is represented by the fish tailed appearance. So this is how the intraembryonic mesoderm is formed. Then after that, some cells from the primitive streak, they migrate and replace the hypoblast cells to form the endoderm. And this endoderm is towards the yolk sac, whereas the epiblast cells get replaced and form the ectoderm that is towards the amniotic cavity. Now you can differentiate which one is amniotic cavity and which one is yolk sac by the presence of allantoid diverticulum going into the connecting stalk from the yolk sac. So you can make out if there is any diverticulum present in the yolk sac that will be the yolk sac and the other one will be the amniotic cavity. Now when this connecting stalk is infiltrated by blood vessels it becomes some umbilical cord. Till then it is the connecting stalk only. Now you can see here, this is the amniotic, um, sorry, the embryonic disc having the cranial end broader one and the narrow caudal, caudal end having the primitive streak along with a node that is known as Henson's node or the primitive node. Then there is cloacal membrane and here at the cranial end there is procaudal plate. Now this procaudal plate and the cloacal membrane, these two are not having mesoderm. So these two portions are devoid of mesoderm. They just have ectoderm and endoderm between them. This is a notochord and over this side only the developing brain also comes. So this is how the embryonic disc is there with the primitive streak primitive node or the Henson's node, cloacal membrane at the caudal end and procaudal plate at the cranial end. It is uh, 
This model is also more or less similar. Cloacal membrane, primitive streak with a primitive node and these arrows show the migration of cells towards the cranial end. This is prochordal plate with the notochord and the developing brain and the amniotic cavity in the yolk sac on either sides. Now what happens in the third week of intrauterine life, this intraembryonic mesoderm which is present between the ectoderm and endoderm undergoes subdivisions. These subdivisions are named as paraaxial mesoderm by the side of the notochord on either sides. Then there is intermediate mesoderm and further laterally there is lateral plate mesoderm. Now these three subdivisions are shown in this model. You can see here this is the primitive streak with the primitive node and the notochord overla overlying it. Here there is cloacal membrane and the prochordal plate. Now the three subdivisions of intraembryonic mesoderm from medial to lateral are the blue colored one is paraaxial mesoderm, the purple one is intermediate mesoderm and the yellow one is lateral plate mesoderm. Paraxial mesoderm is responsible for the formation of somites. Then intermediate mesoderm is responsible for the formation of genital urinary system. And the lateral plate mesoderm, it grows cranially and fuses with the opposite side of the lateral plate mesoderm beyond the prochordal plate. And this lateral plate mesoderm is responsible for the formation of all the body cavities. The one Cranial to the prochordal plate is responsible for the formation of pericardial cavity and the pleural and the peritoneal cavities are formed by the lateral plate mesoderm. Now this lateral plate mesoderm actually gets converted to intraembryonic coelom. As we had um, in the second week of development, there was extraembryonic mesoderm which gets converted to extraembryonic coelom. Similar is the thing here, but it is intraembryonic mesoderm and intraembryonic coelom. This is also subdivided into um, intraembryonic, somatopleuric, and intraembryonic, intraembryonic, splanchnopleuric mesoderm lining the intraembryonic coelom. Right? And this intraembryonic coelom is in open communication with the extraembryonic coelom. So that's all about the third week of development. Thank you.